In approximately 1 billion years from now, the Earth will become too hot to sustain oceans on its surface and all life here will be gone. That's why we're already searching for a new home. The explorer within us made it possible to conquer the most inhospitable corners of our planet. We navigated through the dense undergrowth, creating paths where none existed before, discovering new biological species and establishing a safe habitat in the middle of jungle wilderness. In the early 20th century, adventurers, equipped only with rudimentary gear, explored the realm of eternal ice and silence, Antarctica. Survival in this frozen wasteland took superhuman creativity and adaption. Today, our ambitions extend far beyond the most secluded parts of Earth. As we look into the night sky, we wonder, is there another place like home for us? For a long time, we've considered Mars as the next stop in humanity's cosmic history. That turned out to be nothing but a fantasy, a long-shot projection impossible to achieve and it looked as if there would be no place else for us, until one day, we discovered Titan. An enigmatic celestial object so similar to Earth, it revived our hope in search for a second home. What does it take to build a colony millions of miles away from Earth? Why is colonizing Mars a bad idea? And is our technological progress sufficient to send human colonists on a one-way trip to Titan? On Earth, there's terrain we can work on, oxygen we can breathe, drinking water, comfortable temperatures, and a shield against all kinds of radiation. All of these conditions are vital for life as we know it, but finding them elsewhere in space is like winning the lottery. Take Mars, for example. Geological records show that the planet was once like Earth. Mars had lakes on its surface, it had a warm climate, and potentially life. But all that has long been gone, and today, the planet is nothing like what it used to be. Colonizing Mars makes no sense. It's a lifeless desert, where the average temperature is a bone-chilling minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a distant world where radiation is so strong, each step on the Martian soil brings you closer to an ultimate demise. But let's imagine we decided to establish a colony on Mars. What would it take? A crew of colonists boards a space rocket on Earth, and about seven months later, they'll be the first humans to step foot on the Red Planet. The first task is to build a safe habitat, a sealed environment capable of preserving the right air pressure, oxygen levels, and temperature. The area has to be big enough for people to live in, have all the necessary equipment to stay alive, but also have room for inside projects like excavation or farming. Scientists are studying Mars for the safest location, rich in minerals, where the first megastructures will soon be built. A chain of large domes is the foundation of the future settlement. One problem is solved, their shelter from intense cosmic radiation and dust storms. From here on, excavators start digging up soil, and 3D printers turn it into physical structures. Humanity builds its first housing on an alien world. Buildings extend underground, where they're connected to other domes through a system of tunnels. At this point, the colony no longer has a threat from external sources, but it still relies on a constant supply of water, oxygen, and energy. Life in a colony is not easy. Biologists spend most of their days figuring out ways to enhance vegetation growth. This requires uninterrupted focus, as even slight fluctuations in temperature, pressure, gravity, or humidity threaten the entire harvest. At one point, the colony will fully depend on it. Geologists, along with scientists, are the ones living outside of the domes for the most part, searching for potential ice deposits. Nothing ever goes to waste. Water, minerals, sweat, and even urine is recycled. 3D printers are used to create spacecraft components and essential instruments. Shipments from Earth take too much time, and the colony might not have it. The system is fragile, there's no room for error. Sustaining the colony requires a lot of energy. Energy production becomes a critical cornerstone. Sandstorms on the Red Planet are regular. 
Once sand grains rise into the atmosphere, they create a thick veil that blocks the amount of light that the solar panels can receive. And when sand settles, it covers the panels. Robots ensure the proper functioning of solar energy generation, but they too require maintenance. And leaving the domes means being in constant danger. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, about 100 thinner than Earth's. In other words, there's 99% less air on Mars than our planet, and a lot more objects from space make their way to the ground without burning up. And because the planet's core is frozen, there's no magnetic shield. Cosmic and solar radiation are a constant threat. Each suit is equipped with sensors, signifying critical levels of solar radiation in the atmosphere and potential danger coming from space. A significantly thicker atmosphere with a comfortable climate would eliminate several key problems. Elon Musk has put forward an intriguing suggestion to artificially generate an atmosphere on Mars, raising global temperatures by detonating nuclear bombs over its poles. The reality is, it won't work, and here's why. Water vapor and carbon dioxide are essential greenhouse gases on Earth. While Mars has a large amount of CO2 in its atmosphere, it's only 1% as dense as Earth's atmosphere, so there's less of this gas overall. A big portion of the carbon dioxide on Mars is trapped in non-atmospheric reservoirs, such as polar ice and minerals, making it difficult to access. But even if we could somehow access these reservoirs, the available CO2 won't be sufficient to impact the planet's atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure feels like the weight of the air around us. At sea level on Earth, it's one bar, and it's like having one kilogram of air pushing down on every square centimeter. Currently, Mars has a very low atmospheric pressure, just about six millibars. That's about 15 grams of carbon dioxide per square centimeter. To sustain liquid water on the surface of the red planet, you'd have to increase it to roughly 2,500 grams per square centimeter, over 150 times more CO2 than Mars currently has. It's like trying to fill up a balloon, but there's not enough air to do it. Melting polar ice caps to release water vapor is doomed for failure. If there's not enough heat-trapping gas in the atmosphere, the resulting water vapor would just freeze back because of the low temperatures. And let's not forget about the radiation released from nuclear warheads, which would make Mars even more uninhabitable, at least regions closer to its poles. It's all an intriguing thought experiment, rather than a practical solution. The only thing that makes Mars an alluring planet is its relatively small distance from Earth. But is that really enough for us to throw in all the technological progress we've achieved and most of humanity's resources for a fraction of a chance like this? What if there's a world better suited for our cosmic ambitions? Titan is a cold, icy moon that orbits the planet Saturn, and that's even further away from Earth. So what makes it a better candidate for a future human settlement? We've already built one space colony, the International Space Station. It's separated by a mere 250 miles from Earth. And its crew requires continuous resupply of resources, just like a hypothetical colony on Mars would. But Titan already has an abundance of resources on its surface and underneath it. It's just a matter of collecting, repurposing and recycling them. It took the Cassini spacecraft nearly seven years to reach Saturn, Looking ahead, with potential advancements, it's possible that in about 50 years, our technological progress could enable transporting a group of human colonists to the Saturnian system in just about two years. In the middle of a desolate expanse of Titan, where average temperature sits at a negative 300 Fahrenheit, a brave group of settlers dreams of building their future. Titan is over five times further away from Earth than Mars. Embarking on a journey like this means leaving home and never coming back. One major advantage Titan has over Mars is its atmosphere, which is about 50% thicker than Earth's. Just this factor alone makes terraforming the moon much more feasible. A dense atmosphere means it's easier to trigger a greenhouse effect, bringing the temperature up. Even a slight temperature increase of about 75 Fahrenheit could potentially be enough to turn liquid methane into a gas, which will lead to a chain reaction, setting in motion a range of transformative events. The liquid methane rain cycle stops, 
ice starts melting and the moon becomes covered with an ocean. But that's a long-term projection. All this takes time and a lot of it. So far, the colony operates under a deadline with finite resources of energy, food, oxygen and water brought from Earth. Just like on Mars, settlers need specialized heated suits and respirators, but at least they won't have to be pressurized. The atmospheric pressure on Titan is 50% higher than on Earth, which feels like being 50 feet underwater. On Mars, it's too low. And if you tried walking there without a pressure suit, it'd be almost like being exposed to open space. Skin and muscles swell and expand, joints become stiff, lungs rupture, and the fluids in the body, including blood, boil. Not a fate most would choose for themselves. The surface of Titan is hostile, yet it's a treasure trove of resources. For one, Saturn's largest moon is a hydrocarbon factory. One of the hydrocarbons is propylene, which on Earth is used to form a basic ingredient of plastics and resins. The materials humanity has mastered for ages becomes the key construction resources on Titan. Used to create durable, lightweight structural elements for habitats, insulation materials, tools, and perhaps someday, even components for communication devices. The colony lives in eternal dusk, and even when it's the brightest part of the day, Titan is still shrouded in a hazy atmosphere, making settlers' navigation on the moon challenging. But they may not even require protection like domes to start establishing the first habitats. Although Titan has no magnetic field, it's shielded by Saturn's rotating magnetic field, and it spends roughly 95% of its time under the ring planet's protection. As they discover the alien world of Titan, it starts to seem not so alien after all. There are dunes, rivers, lakes, seas, and although very slow, Titan even experiences seasonal changes once every seven Earth years. Instead of water, bodies of liquid on the Moon's surface are filled with liquid methane and ethane. Natural gas on Earth is mostly made of methane, but there's so much of it on Titan, if there was any oxygen, the Moon would erupt. Although the colony finds a perfect use for an abundance of methane. Since it's 880 million miles away from the Sun, solar energy generation is out of the question. But just like we're using lakes and seas to generate hydropower, the same can be done on Saturn's moon. Scientists think there's enough methane on Titan to produce power from it for tens of thousands of years. And it's not just that. Methane contributes to the formation of complex organic compounds. Aside from 5% of methane and small amounts of carbon-rich compounds, Titan's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. When these molecules face sunlight and high-energy particles in Saturn's magnetic field, they react with hydrogen and carbon, which gives rise to complex organics. Meanwhile, oxygen production experiments are being held in controlled environments. Titan has an abundance of methane, and while the idea of introducing oxygen to Titan's atmosphere might sound like a catalyst for an explosive reaction, it won't cause the Moon to explode. Oxygen itself isn't flammable. For an explosion or sustained fire, you need a combination of a fuel source, an oxidizer like oxygen, and an ignition source. Even if we were to introduce free oxygen to Titan's atmosphere, it would likely freeze before reacting with methane. Additionally, increasing the oxygen concentration would decrease the methane level, crucial for a reaction to take place under Earth-like temperatures, where at least 5% of methane in the air is needed. In isolated rooms with the right temperatures, settlers extract oxygen from water through a process called electrolysis. This is how breathable air is produced on the ISS, by splitting water into its two basic components, hydrogen and oxygen, which is made by passing an electric current through water. And methane could still be used as a propellant. The Moon's liquid methane and ethane lakes are like reservoirs held in the right conditions and waiting to be trapped into. A simple hose pumping up liquid hydrocarbons from a lake will do the trick. To burn it, colonists need liquid oxygen, which they produce by melting the hard frozen water ice on Titan's surface. Reactors are used to heat this ice, and the resulting liquid oxygen and hydrogen are stored in external containers, taking advantage of the frigid temperatures on Titan. Luckily, Titan is full of water. Scientists are certain the Moon contains a subsurface ocean where water isn't frozen and it could be extracted for our purposes. 
In accordance with NASA's mission objectives, the moon's ocean is explored by a submarine. The first ever complex alien life might hide down there, and it could resemble living organisms that reside at the ocean floor on our planet, where there's no light either. Once breathable air is secured, the colony starts cultivating plants. Titan's atmosphere, like Earth's, is full of nitrogen, which is a crucial chemical element that acts as a fertilizer for crops. Light takes approximately 80 minutes to get from the sun to Titan, and it's about 100 times fainter than here on Earth. Enormous mirrors to focus more sunlight on Titan's surface won't work, not just because of this, but also because the Moon orbits Saturn instead of the Sun. The colony faces yet another challenge, figuring out a way to create a source of artificial sunlight. One idea the colony considers is making a glowing ball of molten tungsten and bringing its temperature to that of our Sun. Unlike most materials, this metal remains a liquid at extremely high temperatures. One of its unique characteristics helps minimize the area of its surface, potentially allowing colonists, scientists to keep its shape round. If tungsten was a gas, it would simply disperse into space. But with a ball-like liquid shape, it can serve as a source of heat and light. To make this idea a reality, colonists have an abundance of working hours, and one day on Titan lasts about 15 Earth days. In no way is Titan easy to populate, but compared to Mars, it's a perfect place to attempt an endeavor of this scale. Although it's not the only moon open for colonization, there's also Europa, Enceladus, and Ganymede. Want more insights on their potential? Drop a comment below and give us a like so that we know you want to hear more on this topic. Thanks for watching.